this is my sad face because I have no coffee this morning. Uh, what is that? All right. Anyway, good Monday morning. I know some people are not working this morning, and uh, it's uh, understandable. So uh, that's not the reason why I started late at 8.30. Usually I do 8 a.m. Uh, Facebook Lives, but uh, today was just one of those days where I had other stuff to take off, take care of early in the morning, and it kind of got me uh, behind schedule, uh, not... Uh, helped by me waking up late so other than that we're ready today it is monday the i don't know would you call it the start of the christmas week that's what i'm saying start of christmas week even though some people consider it sunday right and today that being said i'm going to be uh reading up on an article that is talking about uplifting quotes for a cheerful spirit and this is already distracting me the uh, what's going on with this here all right so I apologize for that let me see if I can get this taken care of no I'm not so let me probably need some tape which is all the way over there so excuse me let me get that oh, let me put more here and you know what? I'll just do this here you go I was uh, contemplating whether or not to have the um, fan on and uh, I said well it's a little warm but then the fans started whipping stuff around here and causing shadows and whatnot. So here we go. 13 uplifting quotes on a, uh, or rather, for a cheerful spirit. I'm going to share the, um, the copy or the link, rather, to the article on the comments. So check it out. So here we go. This is from 2017 off of success.com. And um, they always have such great articles. And today I thought I'd do this one for the Christmas week. So... The article starts like this. Cheerfulness is a multiplier. If you've ever been in the presence of a happy person, you know that a good laugh can spread the spirit of joy far and wide. And when you give that joy and positivity to others, you receive the same blessing in return. Oh my gosh. I have like this, um, I don't know, is it um, skepticism? I don't know what kind of, something's like doing this in my head right now and uh as i was reading that i was like um if you've ever been in the presence of a happy person you know that a good laugh can spread the spirit of joy far and wide and i thought to myself if you're in a good mood you know if you're not super like sour that's true sometimes when you're all sour and dour that somebody having fun and and being joyful and happy is 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 grating and irritating isn't that sad and then it says, and when you give that joy and positivity to others, you receive the same blessing in return. And again, I thought, I've been in that situation where it's like, I feel all happy and upbeat and all that. And somebody's all like, rawr, rawr, rawr. so I've been on both sides. And it says, uh, the article continues, when you go out into the world, let your energy light up someone's day. Someone's day, I agree. Have a cheerful spirit that casts itself beyond your reach. And you'll feel the amazing impact of brightening the lives around you. Get your positivity fix with these 13 inspiring quotes. All right, here we go. George Matthew Adams. I say to myself that I shall try to make my life like an open fireplace so that people may be warmed and cheered by it and so go out themselves to warm and cheer. You know, it's kind of like uh, getting close to the uh, to the fire to get the to get that fire inside you, not letting it, uh, not letting your fire burn out, and then you moving forward and carrying the benefits of that fire, the benefits of that joy or positivity to someone else. I say to myself that I shall try to make my life like an open fireplace, so that people may be warmed and cheered by it, and so go out themselves to warm and cheer you get infected by positivity right you get infected by um by the warmth and cheer i have to get infected because i, I don't feel very warm and cheerful if i don't because i don't have coffee so this may be the perfect article for me this morning because <laughs> because i uh i'm a little womp womp for those of us for those of you that enjoy a good cup of joe in the morning a good cup of coffee in the morning you know Sometimes you're like, mm, don't talk to me. Bad case of the Mondays. 
All right, let's see if we can turn those around. Here we go. I say to myself that I shall try to make my life like an open fireplace so that people may be warmed and cheered by it and so go out themselves to warm and cheer. George Matthew Adams. Next, um, it says Orson Sweat Martin. It is the hopeful, buoyant, cheerful attitude of mind that wins. Optimism is a success builder. Pessimism, an achievement killer. Um, yeah, absolutely. It, I don't, I can't think of any thing that has been accomplished of note that was built on pessimism, you know, that was built because with, with a pessimistic attitude. It has to be that it's a done deal, you know, well, it's going to get done. We're going to do it. Let's do it together and get it done. And, and it gets done. It's the hopeful, buoyant, cheerful attitude of mind that wins. Optimism is a success builder. Pessimism, an achievement killer. You're like literally sawing off the bottom of your ladder as a pessimist. You know, you keep you keep knocking out pieces, knocking out blocks, knocking out steps underneath you. That's keeping you from rising to where you need to go or get to or get done. It's a hopeful, buoyant, cheerful attitude of mind that wins. Optimism is a success builder. Pessimism, an achievement killer. Orson Sweat Martin. All right. Jimmy Buffett. It takes no more time to see the good side of life than to see the bad. Well, see, now you're talking about perspective, right? How do you see things? Do you see failures as roadblocks, as endpoints, or as lessons and opportunities? How do you see it? How do you how do you perceive things? It's like you were let go from your job. Okay, that opens you up. That that gives you the opportunity to go finally pursue what you wanted to pursue. You wanted to do. You've been putting off. You're afraid to go. Well, I have a job. I have something there. Well, I can't because of my job. Or you were in a re you were in a really bad relationship, and finally you've broken up. And are you gonna wallow in that, or remind yourself that you were in a bad relationship? Now you can focus more on you. For focus more on becoming the best you you can be thereby attracting probably a better coupling a better person that uh, a person that better suits you that better meshes with you complements you somebody that's uplifting right it takes no more time to see the good side of life than to see the bad jimmy buffett going to kind of go through these fairly quickly today because i have no coffee here we go. Jean-Paul. Laughing cheerfulness throws a light of day on all the paths of life. I've met people that find it difficult to be cheerful. It's just difficult. It almost seems painful. It's weird. It's kind of odd. I mean, I wonder why. I've, I've wondered why. Why that is. I enjoy a good laugh. I enjoy a good cry. I enjoy, you know, the gamut of emotions. I think you have to be able to allow yourself to experience all these different emotions. Along with anger and sadness and anxiety and, you know, despair. If you're open to that, if you're open to allowing yourself to feel that, allow yourself to feel the good side of life, you know, look for things that make you feel better. What makes you feel better? You like uh, animals? Go to the, you know, where they have puppies or cats or whatever you like. And uh, find some joy. You like solitude? Go out and find yourself some quiet, quiet space, quiet time. I love, I love that. I enjoy people, but I, I really do enjoy good, nice, nice, quiet area that I can just chill you know laughing cheerfulness throws the light of day 
on all the paths of life. Jean Paul. William Ro- William Rotzler, R O T S L E R Rotzler. You cannot hold back a good laugh any more than you can the tide. Both are forces of nature. <laughs> Have you ever literally bust out laughing? Busted out laughing where you just couldn't hold it. You it just it like a sneeze. Right? Trying, oh, holding back a sneeze. Holding back a sneeze was a hit in the 80s. Um, holding back a laugh, a good laugh where you, where you have to hold it back, where it's difficult to hold it back. Now you know it's a good laugh. Whether it's from uh, some videos you're watching or something someone says, at the right exact time, almost like they're hitting a, a perfect note. You know, they're like with like a tuning fork, just perfectly perfect pitch note to make you laugh. You just can't hold it. You cannot hold back a good laugh any more than you can the tide. Both are forces of nature. William Rotzler. Find comedies, movies that are funny to you and enjoy them. You know, just disconnect your brain. Ah, let me just enjoy it. Let's enjoy, kind of, not think about anything else. Just enjoy what it is for what it is. Helen Keller. Wait, what was that quote before this one? I already said it, right? Yeah. Helen Keller. The unselfish effort to bring cheer to others will be the beginning of a happier life for ourselves. I've never read the biography of Helen Keller, so my knowledge or my relationship with the memory of Helen Keller is literally that much. I know of her. I know the the broad strokes, you know, but not the detail stuff. The unselfish effort to bring cheer to others will be the beginning of a happier happier life for ourselves. Well, that just goes back to giving, right? Giving of yourself without asking for anything in return. The unselfish effort to bring cheer to others. The big word there is unselfish. You're not doing it to gain something for yourself as a give one, take one. It's not a quid pro quo. It's unselfish. The self isn't in there. What you get out of it is not in the equation. Giving that way is makes a difference. That's when you'll see a difference in your life. The unselfish effort to bring cheer to others will be the beginning of a happier life for ourselves. Helen Keller. Mark Twain. The best way to cheer yourself up is to try to cheer somebody else up. Did he ever meet Helen Keller? And now I need to read the book. A book. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is to sing loud. No, wait, that's a wrong quote. The best way to cheer yourself up is to try to cheer somebody else up. That is, it's it's weird when you do that, you know? When you're helping, when you're trying to cheer someone else up. You kind of go above and beyond. You're not, it's not your usual banter. It's not your usual conversation with having them. You're trying, you're trying to make them feel better. You're trying to cheer them up, right? Kids, somebody who just went through a breakup, someone who just is feeling a little down and you you take it upon yourself to try and cheer them up. You you usually wind up cheering yourself up too. It, it feels good. It feels good to help somebody, right? The best way to cheer yourself up is to try to cheer somebody else up. Mark Twain. We're talking the 13 uplifting quotes for a cheerful spirit. Carla De- Delavine. De- oh man. I've seen this name so many times. And I have never looked up the pronunciation. D-E-L-E-V-I-N-G-N-E. Delevingne? Delevogne? 
Sorry. Kara. <laughs> Let's go with, that. go with that one. The energy you give off is the energy you receive. I really think that. So I'm always myself, jumping, dancing, singing around, trying to cheer everybody up. She wants that energy back, you know? She wants that energy back. The energy you give off is the energy you receive. So true. You attract who you are, right? You attract like-minded people. Man, I think it's a bad idea to try and just kind of, if you're, if you're kind of feeling like a wet blanket, I think the last thing you need is more of them on you, right? The last thing you need is more, more molasses on top of your wet blanket. The energy you give off is the energy you receive. I really think that. So I'm always myself, jumping, dancing, singing around, trying to cheer everybody up. Cara Delevonier. I probably massacred that name, and I apologize. Cara, it's Cara. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Here we go. Next. Uh, oh, man. Really? Who put this together just to mess me up with names? Michel de Montaigne. Uh, Michael of the Mountain, I'm guessing. Michel de Montaigne. Montaigne. Oh, crude Americans. How dare you? The, <laughs> the most certain sign of wisdom is cheerfulness. Well, yeah. You know, enlightenment, wisdom. Be pretty happy when you reach that, right? The most certain sign of wisdom is cheerfulness it's all like knowing what's behind the curtain knowing how the the uh, tricks not the how the tricks how the magic is created right how the magic happens in a good way not in a oh man david copperfield's a fake kind of way no not one of those kind of ways and i'm not saying De david copperfield is not a powerful sorcerer i'm not saying that i'm not saying he's just an illusionist with card tricks. He may be a sorcerer. I don't know. I mean, look at those eyebrows. The most certain sign of wisdom is cheerfulness. Michel de Montaigne. Not much on that one for me. Charles Dickens. Cheerfulness and contentment are great beautifiers and are famous preservers of good looks. I literally read something yesterday when they were talking about somebody who is not a very well-liked person and they said something to the effect of, I don't know, last time I saw that person, it looks like they were on the way out. They looked pretty bad. And then somebody added, evil rots its way from the inside out. I'm like, whoa. But that's basically the opposite of what this is saying, right? Cheerfulness and contentment contentment are great beautifiers and are famous preservers of good looks i mean usually I'm, i imagine that's the case i imagine that's the case in the majority of things where if the person is of good spirits and of you know just a good person on the inside content cheerful they just you know look cheerful look healthier on the outside I'm trying to think like i mean say what you will right dolly parton you know you see her it kind of brings a smile to your face even at his uh and i don't know if this is just me seeing it through how i perceived him or what he meant in my life but someone like gene wilder you know, he had a lot of heartache and, and, and loss and stuff in his life, but he also brought a lot of joy to people and he just seemed like to have that inner glow, you know, and even in his old, older age before he passed, you could see, still see the light in his eye and, you know, had that, that twinkling in his eye. And I'm sure there's so many other examples, you know, Betty White, you know, stuff like that. 
people like that. Cheerfulness and contentment, contentment are great beautifiers and are famous preservers of good looks. That was Charles Dickens. Ralph Waldo Emerson. And so of cheerfulness or a good temper, the more it is spent, the more of it remains. That never-ending well of optimism. If you allow that well to flow. I guess it's like anything else. If there's, you know, uh, let's say water. Water bubbling up and it's just coming out constantly. If you were to open it up a little bit more, more would come out. And so if cheerfulness or a good temper, the more it is spent, the more of it remains. It goes back to some of the other quotes we were talking about earlier about like, for example, the one that Mark Twain said, the best way to cheer yourself up is to try to cheer someone else up, somebody else up, or the unselfish effort to bring cheer to others will be the beginning of a happier life for ourselves by, you know, Helen Keller. It literally goes back to this one. The more it is spent, the more of it remains. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Well, the full quote, and so of cheerfulness or a good temper, the more it is spent, the more it remains. So, Give of your good cheer, give of your good, your positivity, your good temper. The more it is spent, the more of it remains, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Oh, man, we're already down to the last two. This is going to be a short one today. That's all right. Benjamin Franklin, beer cheerful. The problems that worry us most are those that never arrive. Ooh, man. It's like those all the time you, you want to do something, but you start, you know, writing down a catalog of things that are going to go wrong or things that are you think might happen, right? But you never take the step to do it. And you start bringing yourself down by worrying about things that aren't, don't even exist, you know? It says, be cheerful. The problems that worry us most are those that never arrive. Because they don't exist. Sometimes we will them into existence because we're worried about them so much. And if you're watching this video, as before I wrap it up, before I wrap it up, please feel free to share it. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Be cheerful. The problems that worry us most are those that never arrive. Benjamin Franklin. Last but not least, Lydia M. Child. You find yourself refreshed in the presence of cheerful people. Why not make an honest effort to confer that pleasure on others? Again, we do these uh, articles on quotes on a specific topic, and there's always one like universal truth that goes in there. Make other people happy, you become happy. You find yourself refreshed by, by cheerful people, Spread the word, spread the love and <clears throat> and make someone else happy. That's that universal that thread that goes through all these or the majority of these quotes. It's like the strongest thread, right? So you know that's the the truest statement when it comes to this particular topic. Helping other people cheer up helps yourself get cheered up. Being cheered up by other people is your you know, becomes your duty to share that love and positivity and cheerfulness to somebody else. So it's right that we end on this quote. You find yourself refreshed in the presence of cheerful people. Why not make an honest effort to confer that pleasure on others? Lydia M. Child. <clears throat> well, that'll do it for the 13 uplifting quotes for a cheerful spirit. Sorry, I apologize for starting late today. I usually come on at 8 a.m. and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to be able to uh, do it again on Wednesday at uh, 8 a.m. If not, it'll be later, but I'll try and get on nonetheless. So we'll see what we can talk about on Wednesday, two days before Christmas. I should probably start looking for something now instead of like I did this morning for this one. <laughs> it just happened to work out, right? So again, thank you for, for joining me today. If you didn't get a chance to catch it live, feel free to watch the replay once it's already uh, you know ready for, for replay. And please do me uh, a favor and share it. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have yourself a wonderful week. I hope you have a, a great week. 
And uh, if we don't speak on Wednesday, a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays uh, for whatever you celebrate. So have a wonderful day. Until next time, we'll be talking.